Okay. Before I actually go into, you know, the details of the storyline, I have mm-hmm. to tell the audience this book was such a challenge for a number of reasons. I thought it would never, ever get published. It got sold three times to three different publishing houses. And for oh, one my. reason or the other, it never got published. Either the publisher folded, the editor moved on, there was always some crazy story. Mm-hmm. So I decided actually to put this particular um, novel out on its own. And, and it's been a labor of love and something I've wanted you know, to actually get published for probably about five or six years. And I've had to go over and tweak it and update it because of the subject matter. Mm-hmm. You know? The subject matter is it's a story of a woman who at one point she was married and was infertile. And so she and her husband decided that they were going to a sperm bank and they were going to choose the appropriate um, donor who looked like the husband. Well, Mm -hmm. flash forward several years, um, they're divorced, and she's a single parent raising a child who has been diagnosed with leukemia. And it's it's a situation where the leukemia keeps, you know, coming back. And so Mm -hmm. she recommended that the child get, you know, a um, a uh, stem cell transplant. Mm -hmm. Uh, So she now has to find the donor um, because it's a question of survival for her child. Um, And, of course, back then... Uh, there was no agreement in terms of, um, yes, you, know, the certain, you can contact me. The donors wanted to be anonymous. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, that's the premise of this story, how a desperate mother tries to find, because she's trying to, you know, to fight for her, her, her child's life, you know, I mean, and um, with a reluctant initially, a reluctant donor that she eventually finds. Mm-hmm. It is a romance, though, <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's a pretty serious topic. <laughs> Okay, okay. What inspired you to write this particular story? You, you know, I get sparked sometimes by articles that I read, and then I always go, what if? You know, what if this happened? Um, I've had, you know, friends who have gone that route, you know, to have a child, and many of them have had so many obstacles in their way, you know, either mm-hmm. through adoption, somebody changes their mind, you mm-hmm. know, or, uh, you know, I actually had one friend who the um, – a parent who the surrogate um, decided to try to hold them hostage because she got someone, you know, who um, actually was willing to pay her or pay her expenses a, a substantial mo- amount more, than, mm-hmm. you know, um, than the um, than they had agreed to. Oh, wow. uh, I had, yeah, it's you know, it's a, it's really is kind of a very very tricky situation. So. Um, I think I read an article in the paper about, you know, someone going through this, you know, this process and having, you know, some difficulty because the kid had a terminal illness very similar to this, this child. Mm-hmm. And that is actually what prompted me. I started thinking, what if? Um, mm-hmm. The interesting twist on this storyline is that the relationship was a, um, an interracial relationship uh, mm-hmm. where, and that makes it even tougher for the um, parents sometimes to find a match because there are not that many minorities or people of mixed race who will sign up for the donor program. I am right. signing up after, mm-hmm. you know, after researching it and realizing what the issues were, I signed up for the program myself. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. So, oh, thank you. So, so when the audience finish reading your, this, um, this story, what type of message do you want them to walk away with? You know, I want them to walk away with hope. You know, um, this might sound corny, but I want the reader to realize that love is patient and love is kind, and that the most unlikely people, you know, because these two people got together because really of adversity in a lot of ways, you know, mm-hmm. he was also a damaged soul who was recovering, you know, from losing his, his wife and his twins, un- unborn mm-hmm. twins. So at the beginning, it doesn't seem like it's a likely romance between two people, um, mm-hmm. but it worked for them because here is one woman trying to save a child. Here is a man who lost his children, you know, mm-hmm. and here is a woman, you know, surprising who comes out of the woodwork that he doesn't know is never heard of um, who gives him a reason to live again. Absolutely. So who would you say are some of your literary influences? 
<laughs> I, you, know, I, you know, I think about this question all the time simply because, you know, I grew up with the classics. I grew up on a small Caribbean island, and we read whatever we could get our hands on, you know, mm-hmm. men and women. Because at the time, I think there was one, maybe two bookstores. So, oh you know, I was reading Anne of Green Gables. I was reading To Kill a Mockingbird. I was reading, you know, those types of stories. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as an adult, and especially when the multicultural um, market opened up, I read people like Sandra Kitt, who I absolutely love. She's been, you know, around for a while and is mm-hmm. quite the legend, you know, probably one of the first people of color, if not the first okay. person of color, who wrote for Harlequin at the time. Um, you know, did some designs for Isaac Asimov, um, fabulous writer. Um, I read Donna Hill. I read Felicia Mason, who actually I hadn't seen in ages and just saw two weeks ago at a convention. Rochelle Allers, you know, people like that. And I realized, oh, my goodness, you know, um, you know, I want to be them when I grow up, although I was quite grown up. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Those are some great influences. They were uh-huh. indeed, and their writing style, you know, has is, is been very, very, you know, writing style has really, you know, pushed me to the limits because I realize these are excellent writers and, you know, there are going to mm-hmm. be comparisons made. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So how can, um, how can our audience learn more about you and find you on social, and on social media? Well, you know, I'm everywhere, I will tell you, because, you know, in today's world, you have to market. I'm on Mm -hmm. Facebook. I have two Facebook pages, and and certainly you can just type in my name, Marcia King Gamble. It's not a Marcia, but it's spelled M-A-R-C-I-A, and it's King hyphen Gamble, and they're both fan pages, although one has a very um, sort of personal approach to it, Um, Mm -hmm. but that's kind of what I want. I want the audience to, you know, see me as a person as well. Mm I am on Pinterest. I okay. am on, just recently joined in this Instagram. And okay. um, let's see, what have I not covered? Of course, I have a <laughs> website. <laughs> you know, and my website is lovemarcia.com, L-O-V-E dot M-A-R-C-I-A dot com. And, and, you know, don't be shy, please, because I do try to respond to anybody who reaches, you know, out to me because um, I like hearing from readers, and I've learned a lot from them. That's great. I love, I actually, I love authors that do engage with their audience. I love it. Um, well, well, thank you. Then you should come aboard for my Spicy Sunday questions on Facebook. It's, okay. It's Sunday. It's called Spicy Sundays, and it's sometimes it's the battle of the sexes because mm. um, I ask relationship questions. Sometimes people, you know, send these to me anonymously, or again, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's something I've read. And it get it can get it can get very uh, engaging. Let's put it that way, because <laughs> the men always see something differently. <laughs> Ooh, they always do. They always do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, what's next for you uh, for the remainder of 2016? Well, you know, I am. I have a really full plate. I signed a contract um, last year with um, Brown Girl Books. So Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Very excited. Um, Chandra Sparks was a, ed- an editor of mine, oh my goodness, way back when, and it was, it's lovely to reconnect with her. She's an author herself and have her as my editor again. Mm-hmm. So I've got quite a bit to deliver there. I also write um, a relationship column for Michael Fiore. It's an e, you know, e-newsletter, and it's okay. digital, digital ink romance. And I'm in the middle of negotiations right now with a major publisher. Ink's not dry, so I don't want to <laughs> say who they are right now, but right, I'm right, a busy right. lady. <laughs> it's good to be busy. It is, especially in, in you know, today's uh, publishing world. As you know, things have changed drastically. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, um, this afternoon. I truly enjoy our talk. That is all my questions.